In this video, I'm just going to walk you through a couple of the default settings for SQL Server 2005. I've already gone through a default installation. I really didn't change too much except for the location the folders uh, were going to be used uh, and installed into. So we have a default installation of SQL Server 2005. And I just want to walk you through kind of what's been installed, the folders that it's going to use, uh, and the applications that we're going to see in some later videos in this series. So I have it installed. And under the All Programs, we have a folder called Microsoft SQL Server 2005. The folder that you see above here is because we already had, prior to installing SQL 2005, a copy of SQL Server 2000 installed. So we still have the Enterprise Manager, the Query Analyzer, all the different tools for SQL Server 2000. And they work just fine. I could launch the profiler here, and it's going to launch the SQL Server 2000 profiler, the 8.00 version. Okay? But what we are really talking about here, certainly, is the SQL Server 2005. So let's take a look at the folders, uh, some of the installations that we have set up here. Now, let me give you a layout of what I have installed. When I went through the installation, I asked SQL Server to primarily do two things. Number one, only install SQL Server. So I did not ask for reporting services, uh, data warehousing support such as analysis services. I didn't do any of these special installations. I just said, give me a SQL Server. Number two, I asked it to go ahead and install the AdventureWorks sample databases. Okay. Now, even though I did not choose analysis services, it's going to ask me to uh, use the deployment wizard. Now, I didn't really install analysis services, so this really isn't going to help me. It's not something that I'm going to uh, really work with here. Uh, so we're not even going to worry about that one. Uh, the configuration tools, though, are very, very helpful. We didn't install notification services, so it doesn't really matter. We don't have reporting services installed. But it still puts these in here for whatever reason. The SQL Server Configuration Manager, though, is a very important tool. This is how you can do things like change the TCPI ports uh, that SQL Server is listening on. Choose whether to allow dynamic port allocation or static port allocation. And if you do choose the static port, which static port you want it to use. Uh, you could also choose your client network libraries and do one of my favorite things, which is setting up an alias, uh, which we can do that in another video. This is just a, an overview of the tools. The error and usage reporting. In an earlier video, I had turned this information off. I had asked not to send Microsoft uh, information about what the components that I use and usage information. If you want to do it, fine. I don't have a recommendation either way. That's just uh, completely up to you. Um, it does not send any uh, identifiable information, uh, so they say. So I don't care. Either way, I'm not sending that information uh, to anybody. SQL Server 2005 back in here. I really, really like this new tool that we have called the Surface Area Configuration Tool. You see it here as SQL Server Surface Area Configuration. This is, again, not really the place to go through the details of this. If you'll go up to LearnSQLServer2005.com and search for Surface Area or Surface Area Configuration, you'll be able to see a lot more detail. But I like this ability. You can configure this on the individual service basis. And so we can, it uh, takes it a, a couple of seconds here. We could go to the services and configure how the services are uh, working. Do you want to allow other machines to connect to you? And if they do, how do they connect? Uh, we could also go to the SQL Server browser service. Uh, you can set that up. Generally, that's set to uh, default of uh, automatic start. Um, the one that you'll probably find yourself using more frequently would be the features. This is how you can turn things on, turn things off. Uh, notice that Open Row Set and Open Data Source here are turned off by default. That's a good thing, probably. If you went to LearnSQLServer2000.com, and maybe if you were a subscriber, you would see some of the hacks that we did using Open Row Set or Open Data Source to whereby you could actually control a SQL Server uh, if you uh, 
didn't have a SQL Server with the correct patches and other things in, uh, involved. CLR, the Common Language Runtime, allows you to write stored procedures, triggers, user-defined types, and functions using things like C Sharp or Visual Basic.net. And that's not enabled by default. The idea is that SQL Server is secure by default. The items that you need are turned on for most people. The things that you don't necessarily need or most people will not need, like CLR, database mail, uh, XP command shell, are turned off by default. XP command shell, by the way, is a very dangerous uh, extended stored procedure. It allows you to operate and run scripts as though you're at the DOS prompt. So you could use things like make directory MD, uh, or you could use DEL <laughs> to delete files uh, from within the SQL Server. So it's secure by default. And if you take a look at this surface area configuration tool, you'll notice that a lot of this is just not installed, or it's not enabled here. So we did not install these. We did not enable these by default. Okay? So uh, I say OK. I'm not going to cancel, actually. I'm not going to make any changes. And that's the uh, basics of the configuration tools folder. Obviously, you're going to be able to dig down and go through the documentation on your own if you want to go into the books online. I would say that it's probably going to take you a little while to get used to working with the uh, books online. I find that it, uh, wow, it's so much more difficult today to get information uh, and actually get help uh, than it used to be for SQL 2000. They've just um, made a lot of design decisions here that just, I don't know, for me, I tend to not no longer use the books online uh, like I used to. I tend to go to Google or Yahoo or Clusty uh, and type something in there instead of using the documentation. It just, uh, like it defaults to going into online information. Notice we're not getting information from the, on, or from the local help. It's, uh, I don't know, not my favorite uh, here. Uh, and you notice how much stuff that you have. Those of you that work in multiple environments, when you install something like Visual Studio 2003 or 2005, that list just grows and grows and grows here. I don't know, maybe you like it. Not really my favorite. I prefer Google now. Uh, it tends to be instead of the books online. Uh, you can go through the tutorials here. And if I go to the tutorials, really it's just bringing up a page in the books online. Takes forever, though, because it's got to go to the web. And, it, I don't know, you can go through and kind of play with these yourself. Again, it's going to take you quite a while if you're uh, on a slow connection. Management Studio tutorials, you can go through some basic lessons. They're kind of nice, but you have a subscription to this website, so you don't have to go through all of the things that are uh, up here uh, on the tutorials that you have to wait so long for. Performance tools, man, I love this stuff. I love this database engine tuning advisor. Uh, this, again, is not the place to go through the individual tools as much as it is just an overview of what's been installed. If you want to get some more information, just go back up to Learn SQL Server 2005. Take a look at the database engine tuning advisor uh, videos up there. Same with the profiler and the management studio. Uh, just one final word about the management studio. You notice there's no longer an enterprise manager like it, those of you coming from 7.065 SQL uh, 2000. You don't have the query analyzer in the enterprise manager anymore. We still have the management, or we have the management studio instead. The management studio is supposed to be able to do everything that both enterprise manager and the query analyzer can do.